Hello, everybody. Welcome you all for the session on bots. And I think probably it's not the bots which you fiddle around with the wires and the things like that that you felt using some Arduino or the Raspberry Pi. It's all a software which one. And trust me, it's actually the one which actually makes your interaction with all of your customers more automated, but yet has its own human touch. Right now, we are with Priyanka Sharma and telling ourselves and teaching ourselves what it is it all to build bot using a bot framework which is already built on an Azure and you don't have to go for this hassle of training an NLP model or doing this everything is optimized for you and before going to that let's just let me just show you the azgave.community page in which this is an amazing website just go back join the sessions that are obviously there just make it make this site a bookmark so that you'll get to know okay whenever you just want to want to spin this tab perfect it's going to work the same thing. And there are a lot of upcoming sessions. I think uh, join all the machine learning from uh, Vek Raja, amazing session. Just go join there. And there are a lot of past sessions as well. So if you guys want to just learn, just go back, learn something, come and just do whatever you want, man. So this is the best community that you can ever reach out to. And also, we have multiple organizers. So you can reach out to us if you want any topics to be covered and things like that. And also, there are hundreds of speakers out there and a lot of things are the website. And this is an amazing website. Make sure that you check this and pin this tab and things like that. Also, make sure that you join our Telegram channel so that you all will be notified of all the things, all the events, and all the prep that goes behind making this event. And, uh, over to you, Priyanka, ma'am. Thank you so much sure. for your time. What? No, guys. <laughs> no problem. My pleasure. You know, if, if I if I can impart some of the uh, beautiful uh, cognitive services for bots and AI, I would be more than happy to. Yeah. Yep. Sure, sure. So, uh, yep. So let's jump in. All right. Yes, ma'am. I'll share your screen. Sure. Yes. Right. Hey, uh, good evening, guys, and thank you for joining today. Uh, today, as you know, the session title suggests it will be um, conversational AI. So everything which is to know about bots, we will do today. All right. So today, the format will be a bit different, right? You won't see any PPTs or any boring slides and nothing like that. So we'll directly jump into the nitty gritties of bots and we will see live uh, projects in action, source code in action, uh, demos uh, in action, right? And I'll walk you through some of the quick um, steps for creating, uh, uh, you know, up and running bots, right? So Q&A maker and let's, let's dabble a bit with uh, how uh, uh, LUIS, so uh, language understanding integration services is configured and those things, right? So very briefly before we start with the uh, conversational AI. So when we talk of conversational AI, we are just talking of nothing but virtual intelligent assistants that can uh, intercept your messages, whether be it voice or speech or uh, text written, which is written or spoken, and then can take uh, actions accordingly. All right. So um, in, in uh, Azure Universe and C-Sharp.net uh, Microsoft Universe, uh, for using, uh, for developing bots, you have a bot framework, right? So basically, uh, this is a, a two-way thing, okay? You have to download um, something called as a bot emulator. We will see what bot emulator is. It enables you to test out your bot code on non-prod environments, right? So on production environments, your bot will be a service which is deployed to an application. So on non-prod environments, if I want to test the, uh, I mean, the uh, conversation turns between me and the bot, this is how you will test it using the bot emulator framework, okay, bot emulator. And uh, uh, then, of course, uh, you know, you need to have the bot um, template deployed in Visual Studio for, for you to start uh, coding with bots, okay. I'm going to close this guy right now. We'll see all the bot stuff in action, okay. And uh, lastly, uh, just go to the GitHub uh, of Microsoft. Like, you know, you have a lot of samples here. So you can see here, you can see samples like, you know, I'm almost like uh, more than a dozen samples here, ranging from um, uh, preliminary, let us uh, beginner to advanced levels. So you have uh, 
in, uh, intermediate uh, beginner and advanced projects for bots here right so you have QA, you have natural language processing you have uh, teams like you know bots which can be deployed on the slack channels or team channels skype to uh, sort of uh, communicate with you right so those things also you can be sure of okay now coming back uh, before we before we you know uh, go into the world of hands-on and source code and demos i just want to have uh, I want you to have a quick look at this right so basically when you talk of bots they should be able to uh, process nlp spoken language should be open and extensible of course goes without saying for any any enterprise grade solution which you deploy has to be open and extensible has to be enterprise grade and of course you know you should uh, have uh, ownership and control over it like not like uh, remember last uh, uh, thursday we discussed about the epic ai fails where the bot was like spammed by people and then could not uh, take control of its own sanity so should not something should not happen to that right so but bot should be able to know when to hand off to a human in loop and uh, uh, cut off the conversation there rather than getting spammed and or, or answering uh, your questions wrongly no one no one likes a bot which is like you know in an endless loop like especially if you uh, go to those uh, uh, budget airlines automated uh, websites where you are like you know uh, waiting and uh, calling i mean uh, asking the same question in loop again and again again and again so we, nobody wants that right so ownership and control is a very important part of handoff to a human um, uh, intervention when the bot cannot take control of things anymore all right uh, and uh, you have a lot of cognitive services for bots also like language goes without saying q a maker is for uh, that sort of a bot which in indulges in question and answer so especially goes for uh, works for your technical faqs wherein you upload a technical document and then users are uh, uh, basically asking questions around that so you have a manual for let's say operating your aircon system or your uh, uh, configuring your router system and then like people are saying hey uh, even if i turn the switch i cannot see the green light or that i just see the red light blinking what should i do so those sort of troubleshooting things the qa maker bot is able to quickly find uh, your um, documentation and then come back to a solution right come back to you with the solution speech interpreting human speech replying back to you in uh, a voice right so voice bots search of course we saw uh, you know capabilities of azure cognitive search uh, in the second session i think where you were able to process text search and vision so recognizing objects uh, able to uh, so if, I, if you are uploading pictures right so in the bot like you, if you upload an attachment upload a uh, sample picture and then it is able to recognize your faces so object detection face detection custom and computer both all right so yeah so this this uh, sort of uh, uh, varieties you have these sort of libraries or support systems you have for bots all right then a typical bot cycle looks something like this you know so these these are the this you see is sorry correct these are the components of a total uh, ai conversational ai experience right so in the center sits your bot which is your like your uh, program your ai okay you have input uh, via variety of channels okay so you can have input via uh, your, your um, devices right so you of uh, or yeah so yeah, or channels like uh, skype telegram slack or uh, teams mail right and uh, via devices it could be uh, your gps your uh, mobile devices right so from the car also okay and then all of these are basically interacting with the azure bot service azure bot service is comprised of all the things which we saw vision q and a speech language understanding and uh, i mean the output of that is either you know some sort of a uh, knowledge like in the uh, in in the event of uh, uh, a, a q and a uh, bot where you know you are asking a question it is giving out a answer to you it could be some sort of an uh, output like for example a uh, skills right so okay so uh, which are like you know could be interpreted so it could be a graph okay so you are querying something and it could be a graph right it could be a calendar so you are procuring a calendar invite 
right so it could be like you, it could be an output could be a skill or output could be directly what the end product which you want right so either something like a, a, a voice message you sent back to you on a direct channel indirect channel speech channel all right or or some image detection object detection directly dispatched back to you like okay this is i detected uh, 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 you know a leaning tower of pisa in this picture something like that right so yeah i mean a lot of possibilities there okay and uh, when you look when you look at sorry yeah so when you look at all these uh, things coming together one very important thing which i want to talk to you right is about your bots being able to process conversation intelligently now intelligently doesn't mean that it should be you know be able to handle all sorts of natural language processing and it should be an expert in nlp absolutely not meaning for example if it is a bot which is you know trying to authenticate you like uh, it's a registration bot right so you are attending a conference for that matter or you are attending a music event and this is a registration bot where you know you have to input your name your age your address or or some sort of uh, thing so now a, a smart bot would treat this as feels to be validated so when it is saying what is your age and if you are inputting something like a uh, two right or you are inputting a non uh, num numeric value so that bot should be able to validate it and cut you off like you know this is an invalid input as as good as what you do in your form validation right so build uh, so creating a bot has a lot of steps right so it has to have validation of inputs it has to be a multi tone uh, kind of a bot so i speak bot speaks i speak bot speaks that sort of a turn by turn conversation it could be a multi prompt a multi turn uh, conversation so which means uh, after detecting silence from my side for like say up 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 a uh, predefined threshold so 2 to 5 seconds or whatever that threshold is the bot might proactively ask me something like hey are you there right so it's a multi turn bot where you know the bot might answer my questions in a series of uh, steps so it doesn't wait for my turn per se so normal bot is i speak bot speaks i speak bot speak that's uh, sort of turn by turn thing but in this setting it's like the uh, the bot is proactively uh, giving me hints input hints and then waiting for my response right so let us see some of the um, very common bot things which you will able to which will give you an idea of what are adaptive cards right and what are cards and what is a multi uh, prompt multi turn prompting bot and uh, those things okay so these are clever um, tricks or not clever tricks these are clever uh, features which uh, enable you to get a very direct input from the person so it's like uh, you know uh, if if you want to list it's a flight reservation bot or a hotel reservation bot and then it it is asking you for a date field and it directly prompts up with the calendar so you know that you know it's getting a precise input from you because for a date field i can enter mmdd yy dd mm yy i can uh, i mean i can write uh, 12th jan 2021 someone can write january 12 12 2021 someone can just write the date and not the year so to to mitigate all these sort of things instead of having so many algorithmic and programming steps i might as well have a bot which is popping up a calendar so as soon as it uh, uh, asks you for a date input pop a calendar user has to select so these sort of mechanisms right these are clever uh, facilities given to bots to get a very direct and precise input from the user to move on to the next step rather than validating and uh, sort of going in a cycle okay so let us quickly see some of the very nice features in bots okay a hey, sorry sorry for that all right so as you see here i have a lot of working um uh, <laughs> files here right so i, I mean immense uh, 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 quantity of uh, running websites here uh, so most of them are you know I, i'll upload the github uh, repository link here i'll uh, i mean i'll give it to vishwas to upload it right uh, you can also find it on my uh, github repo which is uh, github.com/compuvspu all right so you can also find all these repositories there okay so uh, we will we will uh, some of them are advanced like they will have i require to create uh, resources on azure cognitive services and then provide the keys and stuff all right most of them are uh, i mean you will be able to run them as it is so let us um, run the first bot which is the card spot okay Now what is card spot let us run and see
all right so <clears throat> Uh, when the uh, while the bot is running right so you just look at that so when the bot is running it is nothing but a, a basic web service okay so it's a web api see this is a web api and how the bot emulator works this is a bot emulator all right so what i'll do is file new bot configuration okay and here i will now let's give a bot name say test demo something like this okay this is my bot name your endpoint url you give the uh, 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 local host and the port number on which your bot is running on and then you should uh, uh, append it with api slash messages because this api slash messages is the api endpoint on which your conversation will be going back and forth all right okay so i just say save and connect i'm not um, you know worried about the other fields those are mostly production related security related things okay so i save my bot here and uh, okay right so now this is my card spot and now you can see on the right hand side here you have uh, uh, messages like emulator listening on http so and so and uh, 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 you know uh, basically all the updates of that http so it's a post right so conversation id activity and it is now listening for messages okay so i just type a message saying hi okay so now this is a card bot okay so card bot means what type of cards are available here adaptive card animation card audio card okay and what are cards cards as i said are a specific um features which are available to you to get a targeted input from the user okay so you have so many types of card video card thumbnail card sign in card audio card animation card adaptive card so let us look at adaptive card okay what is adaptive card okay so um okay so for example if i chose an animation card this is what it will be this, this is a basically a uh, animation thumb clip i mean animation clip playing and uh, given to me so this is an animation card bot so let's say for example this this feature is uh, uh, used for example for playing G, uh, uh, gifs okay or it is also used for showing your preview so let's say you are uh, uh, requesting some uh, Uh, clip like netflix or youtube clip and then uh, it will show that sample uh, few seconds of uh, video played before that like a preview right so animation card is for that okay so i type another message and see these are the prompts the bot is giving me type anything to see another card so i i'm typing okay now let us look at adaptive card okay so adaptive card i think adaptive card is having some issues anyways we'll look at adaptive card later on okay so let us look at um hero card so hero card is nothing but you know it is a uh hero card is nothing but uh, it it is able to uh, connect uh, with your bots okay and uh, it interact intelligently okay so this is a hero card why are you wearing Hey, Vishwas. Hello, <laughs> Vishwas. <laughs> Hello, Vishwas.
मैम यू आर म्यूटेड हेलो ए विश्वास जस्ट गिव मी अ सेकंड श्योर 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 या यू आर म्यूटेड आई डिड गेट दिस मेरा सेशन मेरा मीटिंग चालू है या गए शूज ऑल द बट या हां मैं वन वन सेकंड just 10 minute guys just 10 minute if you guys can also look at azure bot services which are also there for health bots they are pretty hey, sorry my sorry yeah, sorry yeah, no problem no my problem. daughter yeah, came in. yeah happen from home no problem no problem yeah okay so she came in and she yeah you are not sharing sorry, sorry for yeah. that yeah, yeah, i i just no shared problem. i just shared it okay i sure, just shared sure. right so i was talking about hero cards right so basically hero cards are nothing but a combination of uh, uh, cards where you can have hyperlinks you can have images you can have videos and uh, stuff like that okay so hero card is basically like a multi uh, faceted multi functionality card okay so you can you can uh, click there and you can maybe connect to a uh, 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 a mail uh, channel or you can have uh, uh, this one i mean you can uh, basically you know um, Uh, redirect to some uh, website from here so that is your hero card okay let us look at uh, some of the other possibilities so let's like, uh, audio card audio card is uh, basically just you know um, so for example if i'm searching for a music or particular album or genre or something like that and then it would be uh, here so uh, your star wars episode 5 empire strikes back okay and then when i when you read more and then it would be able to play you some of the uh, ringtone or the theme music for that right so that is the audio card okay all right let us try for another card so basically we have these embedded features into one particular functionality and you can directly use it to program your bots so if i if, I, if it is a website which is uh, searching for a uh, movie recommendation or uh, clips audio clips video clips then you can use this animation card audio cards or uh, uh, you know your hero card right authentication card is for authentication of course like authentication or auth like uh, uh integrated authentication to your gmail uh, uh, your uh, yahoo mail and those things right receipt card is basically you know for example if you are doing a purchase and then i have to send back an acknowledgement to you so it's an online purchase sort of a bot okay and then i'm uh, doing my transaction and then the uh, acknowledgement comes back to come, comes back to me in the form of a receipt so it's just imagine these as you know uh, complex controls which you can program into your uh, bot functionality to ease the nature of interaction between human and the bot okay so you can just basically explore all the type of cards over here okay let us go on and look at uh, uh, in, in detail in adaptive cards or for a multi turn uh, prompt sort of a bot okay so let us look at i'm um, uh, stopping this guy and let us look at adaptive cards bot so we just look at the cards cards was like giving you a bird eye view of all the cards which are av available there okay so sign in card registration card uh then there was this uh, uh animation card audio card a uh, video card right so let us look at adaptive card now okay right so uh just one word about bot uh, emulator here emulator bot framework emulator so as i said emulator basically enables you to test your bot right so um you can have your all your different bot websites running on different uh, ports right and then you can create new bots for each of your port and save them and later on open them so here uh, you we created a new bot configuration file right so you can just click open bot and create that uh the, the file which you had created or because you know most of our uh, sample the demo code is going to run on the same uh, port basically and this is the same endpoint i will just say uh or oh, i mean connect i'll give that same a api slash messages append it to the h local host and the port number and this is i'm ready to okay so now this is adaptive cards okay so let us say again type anything basically right and then uh so it is giving you a let's say if it is you know a, a, a hotel menu sort of a thing right so then it will give you the menu 
okay and then i give you hi again and it will give you another adaptive card it is for weather so adaptive cards are basically adapting to the context in which you are operating okay so previously it was sort of a, a thumbnails where it was an image website for example you are browsing and it gave you so this is a weather website where it is giving you the weather um, information in in in, in the sort of a card right so adaptive cards are basically uh, they can be formatted to show you what sort of response you want to see so maybe tomorrow i am uh, getting uh, you know my my response is something like um, uh, uh, text message plus details plus address plus some uh, uh, url to navigate or has attachments okay so i can format that so adaptive card is basically as a name suggests it adapts and formats the response to tune and uh, also you know how that on which channel that response is sent okay so uh, when you are when you are um, uh, expecting the response from a, uh, a telegram channel example the formatting has to be different when it is from a teams channel the formatting and the emoticons there are different right on a uh, instagram uh, chat or facebook uh, messaging uh, ch uh, channel the formatting and the response type is different for the same query right so adaptive cards are basically adapt that to the channel on which it is transform transmitting the information all right okay let us look at some more meaningful conversation bots okay and then we'll go on to a very powerful q and a bot as well okay so adaptive cards sorry adaptive cards and cards were the basic functionalities okay let us look at um, yeah let us look at this guy yeah prompt users for input and uh, multi turn prompt bot all right so let us look at a multi turn prompt bot so I'll, i'm going to close uh, the demo here okay let us look at handling attachments also is a good uh, this thing but yeah let us look at multi turn prompt bot multi turn prompt bot is uh, typically what you encounter right so you are typing a message the bot is giving a response you are typing a message so what is your age what is your name that sort of a thing right so bot is ready let me run it i'm just going to file again here open bot and i know that this is going to be the same and i will just say connect all right and then yeah uh, my conversation here is ready to go okay so i'm just saying hi So please enter your mode of transport. Now it has given me three options: car, bus, cycle, uh, bicycle. Okay, let me say car. Now it has understood uh, the uh, response I have given, and now it is a bot turn. Okay, so you can see all uh, all the uh, HTTP request response activities going on here. My turn, bot turn. My turn, bot turn. So this is a, like a single turn. Okay, so it is waiting for a response, then giving me uh, depending on the response, it is prompting the next input. Right. So enter your name. Let me enter pre. Okay. Okay. Then again, that would you like to give your age? Yes. Okay. Let me enter twenty. Okay. And uh, yep. Uh, so it is sending. Sometimes you see there's a bit of lag there. So it is sending the message and the bot understanding the message, processing it, and then returning back the next question might take a slight delay. But because this is on a test system, right? On on your production channel, which is on your Azure cloud, this is much faster. Okay. So I have your age as twenty, and then it is saying please attach a profile picture. Okay. Bang on. Let me go here and let me uh, you know. attach my profile picture could be anything yeah so let me just take a picture here which is also my uh, linkedin profile picture okay so it is sending that and then it will basically ask me to confirm whether this is my profile picture so this is also how the bot attach uh, uh, handles attachments right is this okay yes fine i'll say this is okay if it is no then it will go back do you want to upload another picture okay so then it is finally giving me that i have your mode of transport as a car your name as pri and your age as 20 and this is your profile picture so this is how your multi turn prompt bot is it this bot you can imagine like you know in the place of your registration um, websites or your uh, hotel reservation uh, movie uh, uh, reservation your purchase websites where you have purchased in something and where this is your shipping uh, address this is your delivery address this is your time uh, the preferred time of collection all those things right so this is your um, multi turn prompt bot and again i want to show you something like if i were to give a 
uh, in incorrect input for the age right so now again see how smart the bot is like how smartly the bot has been programmed now when you're uh, uh, been asked for your mode of transport this is like the drop down option which you have in your website right so a drop down list so i have been provided three options so that i won't misspell uh, a cycle or bike or something like that right so so let me say bus this time around okay and then it is understanding please enter your name something okay and uh, once it is done it will ask me for would you like to give your age yes now this time i might give a you know wrong age so let me give something like this and then it will say again the value entered must be greater than 0 less than 150 so it is a kind of validating my input right and then i uh, has to be let me let me uh, say it is 12 okay and then for certain websites it is like for a movie website for that matter or for a hotel reservation website you should be able to prove that you are above 18 years 18 or 21 so that sort of validation also okay so profile picture and stuff okay and then i just type any message to skip i have an option to uh, skip my profile picture and uh, no attachments received so it now knows that i have not uploaded anything and yes and again that yes no sort of a prompt okay so these are the Uh, prompts also so you are being given options you are being given yes no options to choose and to sort of you know uh, operate the bot in loop okay so profile picture correct no it will again ask you for profile picture is it okay yes it will proceed to the next question so again you imagine these bots as a combination of your ai where your nlp comes into place okay uh, uh, com comes into play when you are programming with luis okay or when you are programming with q and a maker with features okay or, or, or as we are going to see the demo of um, all knowing q and a generic bot right so given a paragraph it will be able to answer all your questions okay so it is a combination of your procedural programming wherein you have cards you have or uh, prompts your validation on top of that you also have nlp and ai imparted to it so vision services to detect objects nlp service uh, services to intercept what you are trying to speak okay so uh, um, i mean uh, like uh, uh, the demo which we saw that day you know where it was a luis demo luis demo like language understanding integration services i'll show that demo again for people who were not uh, you know uh, part of the audience uh, that day where we saw a smart home system a lightning lighting control uh, by voice messages and the bot was able to dim or uh, uh, brighten up the lighting depending on the input which we give to it okay so it's a combination of the features of your normal procedural programming with all sorts of smart features like adaptive cards and cards and all and on top of that you have your ai functionalities all right so uh, basically you know i could go on on and on with the demos here okay so we saw multi or uh, uh, turn prompt bot let us look at prompt users for input bot okay so i'm going to stop this and after that we'll move on to your q and a bot we are already 35 minutes into our session here okay so so prompt users for input and it is uh, 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 you have all the other bots also like you know facebook bot so which is bot operating on the facebook channel telegram bot slack bot all those varieties also all those flavors also okay so same thing file i will say open bot and i'll just going to click this and connect okay so this is connecting okay this is sending a message okay so i'm just again what is your name okay how old are you maybe 67 right or you if you type any other non numeric number it is again going to validate accordingly right so whether it is okay now when is your flight so if i enter something here this is like a flight reservation bot maybe so when is your flight then it will ask me i'm sorry please enter a date at least an hour out okay so let me say june 21 without any year now it will ask me to enter the date in uh, uh, a dmm yy format or it might assume that you know when i'm saying june 21 it has to be the next year so it's something like in the future all right and then because june 21 is something which is past already so if maybe i uh, enter uh, 
uh, September 12th, then it, it will take as 2021. And then this is like uh, your booking has been confirmed. Okay. So this is like a prompt user for input and then validate the input. Much similar like the pot which we saw earlier, right? Uh, just, just very specific, uh, specifically to the date. So this is also like, you know, for a flight reservation bot. Now how it can be a combination of procedural plus AI bot is, let's say, some people might say i want to book a flight some some someone might say where is the nearest airport to me someone might say i want to travel to uh, the airport in the next one hour okay so all these three utterances which we call which is natural language sentences need to be interpreted need to be interpreted out as uh, uh, as some intent program to some intent all right okay so enough of uh, that okay so i'll just directly jump on to the demo here for uh, q and a okay sorry yeah all right so this is our um bird based q and a demo okay so as you can see it has a lot of uh, flavors english hindi spanish french okay again if you just go to this uh, demo uh, uh, website here it has a uh, lot of bird based demos not only for q and a but also for text summarization so dynamic text summarization entity recognition entity extraction okay so uh, named entity rec ner named entity recognition and some the thing which you saw in our text analytics or cognitive services okay so let us look at our q and a demo right and then this is your paragraph like google was founded in xyz by larry page and sergey brin and you know while they were students and then depending on some text corpus which is given to you intelligently understand that and then try to understand what is the uh, question asked to you and hunt that answer in the corpus given to you okay so just to show you that this is not scripted huh? this is not scripted let us uh, go to uh, a website and copy some text okay so okay so let let us copy this and let us put it in our uh, nlp demo okay and i'm going to just basically copy this okay so this is designed to identify valuable information in conversations louis interprets user goals and distills valuable information okay so i mean i will say what is the function of louis okay so it is i dynamically pasted some uh, paragraph here okay or uh, some text corpus and then i'm going to uh, uh, fire a question which is trying to make some sem uh, semblance of um, uh, uh, sanity in my text which i have given okay and then i answer me accordingly so understand my context and then give me back the value accordingly okay so now when i do here okay and uh, okay forget this i don't want to have question two and question three okay because it's a very simple very small paragraph okay and then i will just say submit okay and then of course because you know it is going to process right and then fantastic <laughs> it says no question answered okay and uh, okay okay and now let us submit perfect well maybe it requires a bit more documentation right okay uh, so it uh, uh, more paragraphs right okay so let us let us uh, you know park that aside for some time or maybe let us go here and take uh, here okay virtual assistant okay so here let us take a paragraph here and then maybe you know right so let us take all this information and let us paste it here sorry okay and then you can fire your questions okay so Okay. And 
then let us hope that it answers otherwise uh, <laughs> i am in serious trouble okay so basically question 2 is not uh, uh, question 2 is not something which we are interested in okay and then here see question 1 what does virtual assistant allow it allows your customers to interact with your services at home at work and in your car okay uh, lu integrate into is not a, i mean it is not something within the domain of your um, uh, um, text corpus which you have given right so what does virtual assistant allow then it has given you the uh, i mean the correct answer from the text corpus which you have given again you can ask the same question about customer care okay so what does customer care do okay what does customer care do and then again i submit okay and wait for that and then yeah so in, improve and personalize your customer support okay so it is dynamically whatever text you are pasting on it it is trying to now make uh, um, uh, make sense of that and then it is trying to give you the answer how does q and a work okay so q and a a service in uh, what framework it works on a service called as q and a maker okay so q and a maker here right and then you have to upload your documentation so if it is a faq bot right so it's not only just a nlp it's an faq bot where you have a technical documentation and you have questions on the documentation right so that works as basis uh, 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 an offering called as qna maker so uh, uh, due to you know uh, the shortage of time which we have in this sessions we'll cover these in in details later when we have more like you know detailed sessions surrounding only on luis only on qna so this is just a brief overview of the features which we have in azure cognitive services and bot framework okay so qna maker you can upload your knowledge base which you have into this qna maker service right so you have a cognitive service qna maker service you can upload your documentation your knowledge base there and basis that you can have questions on that so type questions and then expect answers out of it okay for this sort of a more nlp based approach uh, it, bot based approach which is you know like understand the text and then the question then the context and then give the answer that is higher order ai right so it has to not only have q and a it needs to understand the question the context of the question and then get back the answer to you so one such question answering bot which we have programmed is using machine learning dot net okay so it's very simple it's a, a web uh, uh, api based bot okay so you don't this uh, uh, we are not going to test it on a emulator here so this time it is like a proper working website okay website is uh, basically taking input as a context and the question context is again dynamic right context is dynamic and uh, question is also dynamic so like the context which i gave just now to this um, uh, you know we copy pasted some uh, uh, code i mean some text from the bot website and pasted it so same way i have some sample uh, text here okay and uh, this is my website which is running okay so this is this is already running right this is already running so now what i am going to give is i am going to call my prediction endpoint with two things one is the context so context is a paragraph which i want to feed to the bot and question is the question which i am going to ask based on the context okay so let us look at one some sample this thing okay so this is a uh, 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 url format okay so just interpret uh, uh, percentile 20 as a space character so you, url format if i have to give a text with spaces this is how it is encoded so this is uh, you are encoded so this is my context so context is established in 1988 tsmc is the world's largest independent foundry with over uh, xyz market share like over 20 billion market share and it is also considered uh, the best managed and the best uh, corporate governance company uh, in taiwan uh, with uh, a strong management track record okay so this is uh, the background of uh, tsmc okay company and then the question is what is the country of tsmc so where is the country of tsmc mc right so this is something which i gave you can experiment with anything right just ensure that your text is binary encoded and then fire the question based on the context or could be a bit you know uh, uh, the, the question may need not be direct it could be an indirect question uh, it has to know that still the answer lies somewhere within the text corpus which i have given and able to give me okay so this is the question which i have given to my bot and the answer which is giving me so what is the country of uh, tsmc 
it is in pi one. Okay, so tokens is basically an array. So if it thinks that there are multiple answers possible for this question, it will give it as a uh, 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 array of tokens. Okay, and probability is almost like hundred percent sure that the answer which it has come back is what it uh, what we are searching for, what we are looking for, right? So this is uh, uh, also like the Azure cognitive search which we saw last time around, wherein you know semantic search we are fi firing targeted questions and uh, questions and getting very specific targeted answers, right? So uh, Uh, not uh, i mean th this is also uh, one of the functionalities of qna maker bot in which you know it understands the uh, context uh, or the corpus the question context and retrieves back the answers to you okay bot framework or bot uh, uh, the cards and bot framework is sort of shaping up your response so you have your ai on top you design your qna maker your language language understanding services and then have the bot frame framework to serve it up as a request response or a chat Uh, uh, UI, right? A chat-based UI, and then you can deploy it on uh, uh, channels. You can deploy it as a web uh, 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 chatbot, web app chatbot. Okay, you can deploy it on different uh, like Teams and Slack and uh, Telegram and whatnot, right? So, bot framework basically is allowing you to compose all of that and. bot framework uh, you need to have a basic installation done for that a template and then it takes care of all the code so basically all the communication in bot framework is request response all right so it's like it's a turn based so my turn was done then the bot's turn it's a multi turn bot then accordingly what it should do whether it should prompt or what sort of uh, uh, ui it should use to render my answer and so on and so forth all right uh, uh, for people who missed the lui demo right so this was um, right so this was the demo which was which was uh, shown on the very first session when we were talking of language understanding integration services like as i was saying there are a lot of ways of meaning the same thing right so just when humans talk to each other and i i don't know the name of certain uh, the person who am i who i am interacting with i'll just say uh, sorry i didn't catch your name or how should i address you or very specifically uh, like you know what's your name or may i know your name so now all these things like sorry how to address you i didn't catch your name may i know your name uh, what's your name right or uh, uh, so all all these utterances my my uh, utterances which i do they mean one and the same thing they mean that we are uh, we are questioning i mean we are trying to get the name okay so this louis is something like that louis something like that okay so it will it will uh, try to get the um, i mean get the uh, intent behind my utterances and then try to take the uh, appropriate action so here as you are going to see like you know this this was also shown but for the benefit of people who were not in the initial sessions and this is this is purely bot right this is purely bot related so it makes more sense to touch up on the language understanding integration services here wherein you know the bot is going to uh, take appropriate actions and then when i when i'm saying that i'm watching a movie it is going to give me more light in the living area okay or let's say like i uh, need more light to cut my carrot then it is going to put the uh, kitchen in more uh, bright light okay and then if it, uh, i am sleeping okay if i do that then it will just basically dim the uh, uh, lights of my bedroom okay Okay. Then basically, it is going to dim the lights of my uh, uh, bedroom there, right? Or then, if I uh, say like, if I need more light to read my book, I need more light in the bedroom, right? Or I'm reading, then accordingly, it will make the lights bright. Okay. Then I I will just say. and then it is understood that so it is saying turn off all lights like right then then if i say that now uh, i want to read so it could be read a book or a, i just want to read right then it will uh, uh, it will uh, give me enough light so now i saying i want to read it will give me enough light in places where i can possibly read a book okay now if i if i'm very clear that i want enough light to work in the kitchen or i want to work in the kitchen or i want to cut carrots so it knows that i when i'm cutting carrots i that that has to be in the kitchen and that's why it will uh, sort of you know make the lights in the kitchen brighter and then the other okay so these these kind of things also very important for bots to understand like 
like as i said like in uh, terms of uh, flight reservation cancellation or or any other bots you know which are not very direct like which have a bit of complex functionality even bots which are interacting with people for credit card related uh, transactions or those things they need to understand the intent behind what the um, what the person is saying interpret it and take actions accordingly okay so microsoft gives this functionality uh, in in with terms of q&a and luis okay so for luis you can refer to this guy luis.ai i'm going to uh, put these in the chat window here okay so you can refer to this i don't know um, navishwas if you can if you can uh, transmit it to our users so this was going to be luis.ai and uh, ah, yeah. to an a yeah. maker.ai right so these these two offerings luis.ai q and a maker.ai for sure are going to uh, you know uh, be interesting additions to your bot building experience so i strongly uh, urge all of you to go ahead and start experimenting with the bots okay and uh, yeah that's that's it so no no ppt today all uh, source code and all uh, hands on i'll be ready to take questions i see that i have a couple of questions uh, here yeah. from aman saying can you do azure ml session as well absolutely ask which was to schedule one and i will do it uh, in azure ml be specific like you know you want to know what like how to use the azure ml ecosystem mm -hmm. creating runs experiments inferences or uh, like you want to do uh, auto ml that's also a very beautiful thing auto ml right so as i was talking like no code no no ml code so just uh, select your uh, case study use uh, auto ml to generate right so can do that yes as your ml session i think we have one on uh, auto ml i'm not sure if i'm correct yes so yeah so we can we can do one on ml.net uh, ml.net also right so yeah azure ml i will target to do that and his second question is bert and visual bert can we integrate it absolutely so uh, uh, bert uh, you can integrate it uh, in like you know ml.net with the uh, uh, microsoft uh, um, bot framework so ml.net on top of bot framework can be done ml.net also uh, you can use you, you know external libraries uh, bert and uh, in anything like basically any custom nlp model you can use in ml.net right so you can use it i mean you can you can uh, have it built on ml.net or you can have it built as a normal uh, uh, azure machine learning and deploy it to your azure uh, machine i mean azure as an endpoint which is azure container instance or azure kubernetes service and then integrate into your uh, uh, bot framework absolutely yes so we can we can do that bot visual bot so the one which i showed you right the demo uh, this uh, demo which you're talking about uh, the question and context like i gave it a question in url and uh, context in url and ask a question that is nothing but running on uh, c sharp using bot so it is squad bot using uh, squad q and d bot yeah i right? always had this question you know always like uh... you know there is a lot of integration with visual models that we build plus the nlp models that we are actually training towards like there is an custom annotated model like it can be any format but there is always a training of nlp models we are going on but like i just wanted to know can we train a model and just deploy it here or something like something like what we can sorry for my <laughs> you know this is no see bot is not see bot is not just training ml models right it is making use of those trained ml models to give you some inference some output at the end of the day right so training and creating models is a different thing like in the case of my bert okay so if you look at my bert code here my bert uh, machine learning so that bert is nothing but i have my ml models created here right so i'm creating my uh, it, it is an onnx so basically i'm uh, uh, downloading the onnx and then i'm uh, doing heuristics on top of that and then this api is just calling that bert model so what goes on here is transparent to the user right so this can be anything this can be i am uh, using a python keras to build my model or uh, well, you you get the point right so how i compose my model how i create my model and what i use it for so that what part is your bot framework like what i'm using it for how part is your data science yeah that's true because when when i see like 
there is a company which comes up with their own framework makes the training easy but there is a company which makes the process easy there's a there's a company which comes with their own framework they make the integration very easy like nlp has no head and tail it's an open ended problem statement you want today so i was like can we fit in any of these like because there is an health board here because i was also trying to build an health board for my own project also so i was so you like, for your health board right you have a lot of health uh, related models mm-hmm. out there right so uh, aman is asking another question is like uh, abstract summarization right mm-hmm. go for bert uh, the, the bert has uh, so this i'll i'll give you this uh, library okay. hugging face also has the same thing right hugging face Sorry? also has, hugging face Hugging Face is an uh, a library which you used to uh, call all these models. All so, but how do you use? <laughs> but yeah. how do you use? You use using Hugging Face, okay? So this yeah, text summarization. You go, you hear, you go, okay? But based text summarization. So I'm going to give you this website. These are demos here. You can um, basically read the more uh, on that, okay? So where am I? Ah, uh, that's the one. That's one. Yeah. right so yeah maybe you can uh, paste it in the window okay yeah. right so this one and another thing is what makes nlp models more accurate in bots see this is a research uh, question right so they are coming out with a lot of uh, um, uh, models which have which which have like huge neural networks uh, mm-hmm. uh, if you look at uh, open ai gpt3 and uh, bert they have like uh, i don't know like layers of networks which are 5 and 2 plus plus uh, deep right so basically the more deeper your neural networks are and the more uh, corpus you use to text uh, to uh, train your bots on to to train your models on that is going to make them sharper so nlp models are not like there's no uh, in they are accurate in bots or not is not the question your bot is only smart as as much smart as the model which you are basing it on right so if your nlp or using uh, bot or you are using uh, this uh, semantic bot or you are using um, uh, you know open ai gpt3 based models there are a lot of flavors out there so if for, for like are you I, i was telling you vishwas right so you are building a health bot so there are a lot of matured uh healthcare uh, models out there okay so spark nlp especially if you go and look at those very mature and have a lot of uh, uh, you know the, uh, uh, semantic uh, uh, taxonomy ontology all those things you can do there a lot of semantic interpretation so if i'm working for i mean i'm searching for ibuprofen then what is the similar medicine to ibuprofen that has the similar effects right so those things are this are very mature for for other things like for for generic models you might have to or your custom models you might have to train on your own personal corpus what to vec which i was uh, showing the other day what to vec it is like also trained on uh, google uh, you know vector so i think it is a uh, um, wikipedia corpus and it is pretty decent like if you are searching for generic uh, words like generic synonyms okay so that also will be able to uh you you'll be able to base your generic nlp on that right so yeah, yeah. and there are man of course azure devops is something which we have been very pondering upon like there's a speaker where as soon as he gives me the date he is like very busy okay <laughs> like that's the problem with handling speakers okay like ma'am was like very strict every thursday i'm going to do it for sure no matter what like th- like if speakers like her come up because she loves the community i don't know how much because everybody comes and dms me back get her back some more or the other like yeah that's how if speakers are ready of course we are always ready ma'am like i wanted to know because there is a lot of spacey spacey which is also very time like spacey, not just right. serious not just tensorflow tensorflow had a time where we had word to back and it was hard coded but now there is all algorithms which are coming up but like i wanted to know like uh, when you when you are building not just a bot but when, when there is a problem statement given something like an nl like how can we really aggregate the data clean it cleanse it then make some validation set test set and things like that. but how how is this process in the real world apart from this bot framework how is it designed tedious for? tedious yeah, <laughs> yeah so i see actually as i told you right so any any uh, such project 
depending on its scale so enterprises will typically have documents data ranging from like a couple of uh, gigabytes to terabytes right sometimes petabytes so um training that much amount of data how much time it will take what is the structure of the data like if it's all over the place or it has some structure to it like it is unstructured like all just you know text files log files randomly generated no no tagging to them no metadata you know uh, that kind of thing so yeah anywhere uh, you know let's let's assume the worst case scenario where your data is all over the place and we have to actually aggregate it and then uh, analyze it and then say that okay uh, uh, you know the, this 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 is some sort of uh, data which makes sense and then throw out uh, remove stoppers and i mean all those things so it will take anywhere between 4 to 6 months just to get a uh, good data and then do uh, uh, i mean uh, tagging on on top of that so annotating what you called as annotation of data so there are a lot of annotation tools uh, out there right so annotating data for extracting entities for extracting custom information extracting relationships like uh, xyz is a project manager with the uh, abc years of experience with the pql uh, skill sets those sort of entity relationships so all that will anyway anywhere take between um, couple of uh, uh, depending on your data size huh? a couple of months to about uh, half a year just to get a good data and then you will have uh, domain experts on top of that to to sort of you know annotate it more correctly so at my level i may be annotating or cleaning the data experts on top of that will be if using uh, um, I, i i will be you know you know helping me to annotate even more right so yeah anywhere between uh, so just this is just data procurement huh? i'm not even talking of training and productionalizing that may be another four five months see once your data is there your process of training and model building becomes quite easy getting good data clean data is the first and foremost important step yeah you know like somebody asked me like how to annotate the data man there are amazing tools like label studio there are amazing yeah yeah like yes Dying. right yes production systems absolutely use these tools itself it might look like a something silly but this is what it is even if you ask the best of the best researchers they say that we sat down we annotated the data it's the it's the part of parcel of the process like you can't get away from that it's correct so you then you have to do it not just label studio we go to from uh, your uh, microsoft if you want to do some image annotation using to go on with it cvat from intel lot of things yeah yeah what vott cvat right so we are using vott and cvat for image uh, annotation yeah. right label studio is for everything right label for everything for everything. yeah correct yeah right Yeah, so there are a couple of other questions saying is it possible to use ai bots in robotic surgeries <laughs> good question but what would you want the bots to do like operate uh, uh, surgical equipments i don't know maybe you should go and talk to uh, the experts in those fields but see as of now robots are used in surgeries for doing very precision cuts right so if it's a knee surgery or very uh, like you know a uh, spine surgery and then you have to be a, have to have a very precise cut in some location robots are used for doing that right but why would uh, like you know I, i don't know whether uh, that is still mature at a level where the robot can actually take the uh, scalpel and knife and actually do the perform the entire surgery no i don't think so so it is still a human in loop interaction there out there so maybe robots making use for uh, uh, used for making very precise cuts at some locations or sealing certain you know uh, wounds and all but that would still require a skilled surgeon uh, to entrust yourself uh, to if i'm going for a eye or a heart surgery of course <laughs> yeah that's true that's true it's not easier like like nlp is like very hard like there are computational linguistics that's what researchers call themselves I'm a researcher in computational linguistics and things like that. It's it's complex, by the way. I think thank you so much for a lot of insight. I think today was like too many questions, not too many, but like yeah, too many. Yeah, decent, 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 decent amount of questions. Oh, yes, ma'am, it's challenging. Okay, I right. think I'll use either then patient and then patient. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> What you know, man? <laughs> Doctors also say the same thing. I think yeah. perfect folks perfect i think thank you so much for being that engaging today at least because 
every time there will be people but no questions but today there was yeah no that's that's very disheartening for a speaker by the way guys that you know we are uh, giving so much time and then you don't come up with questions so yeah so i normally with bots i do get a lot of questions right so because it's that interesting topic yeah. of course right so yep uh, look uh, look forward to seeing you guys next week uh, stay safe and uh, happy ganesh chaturthi yeah same to you guys and same to you ma'am she is from singapore and she is it's like 9 pm 10 pm now yeah 9 9 9 9 pm so yeah it takes it takes lot of dedication to put in all these content posts thank all the best to you folks thank you so bye, much bye guys bye bye bye